Hey guys, and welcome back to our video all about studying God's Word. Today we're specifically going to talk about the Old Testament. Now the Old Testament is the portion of the Bible that often brings with it many questions. Maybe you're thinking, am I even supposed to read it anymore? Because some people will tell you to read it every single day, and some will tell you they don't even need to read it anymore. So are you supposed to? How are you supposed to look at it? And maybe you're thinking, is it a bunch of stories, or how am I supposed to read it and approach it? Well, today, my goal is to help you understand more of what the Old Testament is. Because the Old Testament is something that God has used to speak into my life through. I could talk about the Old Testament all day long because I want people to understand that it is just as much God's Word as the New Testament is. So today, we're going to clarify what is the Old Testament. We're going to talk about some different types of genres that we see in the Old Testament. But then we're going to talk about what is our relationship to the Old Testament today. Do we read it? Do we apply it? How are we supposed to look at everything that it says? So the Old Testament actually makes up the first 39 books of the Bible out of all 66 books of the Bible. To give you a little context of how much of the Bible that is, I did a chronological reading plan last year. So that meant that I started in Genesis and ended in Revelation. So all the way from the beginning to the end. And for the first nine months, I was in the Old Testament. The New Testament didn't even begin until September because that's how much of the Old Testament is a part of the Bible. You see, the Bible is made up of the Old Testament and the New Testament. But the Old Testament is packed with stories, stories that many believers and unbelievers alike know about. We see stories like the creation of the world and the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. We see David and Goliath. We see Daniel in the lion's den. We see God part the Red Sea. You see, the Old Testament is packed full of stories. See, the Old Testament covers the period from the creation of the world to 400 years before Jesus comes here on earth. And 400 years after, so whenever Jesus comes to earth, is whenever we see the New Testament begin. So that's the period that the Old Testament covers. And within the Old Testament, we see a few different genres of literature. But the way we often read different types of literature is often based on the genre that it is. So you're gonna read Harry Potter different than you would your math textbook. You're gonna read a joke book different than you would some other type of fiction book. And the same is true in the Old Testament. We see different types of genres that we're gonna read differently because they were written differently. They were still authored by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through human authors, but we read them differently because of the way that they were written. We see a genre called narrative. Now narrative makes up about 40% of the Old Testament. That's where we see stories. That's like the book of Exodus, where we learn about the plagues of Egypt. We learn about how the Lord rescued Israel from slavery in Egypt. But we also see poetry, and poetry makes up almost 30% of the Old Testament. But we often don't recognize it because Hebrew poetry is written differently than the poetry we read today, because it doesn't have the same type of rhyme and meter that we see today, but it's still poetry. This looks like the Psalms, where we see songs and hymns as we get to learn more about who God is through this specific type of writing. We also see wisdom literature, and wisdom literature is highly practical, but we don't see it as much today, but it helps us know who God is and how to live in light of who God is. And that looks like Proverbs. You could even read a Proverbs a day and get something new out of it each and every day because they're highly practical and they're wisdom-based. But then we also see another type of genre, and that's prophecy. Now, prophecy serves a few different purposes, and here's a couple. Is that within prophecy, it warns of the judgment to come. So God used specific people to speak into and to warn of the judgment to come. But he also prophesied of the salvation to come through these people. So the way you read prophecy, which is warning of or speaking of something to come, you're going to read it different than you would a narrative, because that's a story of something that is happening right then and there. So knowing the different types of genres helps you understand how to approach the Old Testament, because you're going to read them different. But there's also different authors within the Old Testament. But you see, all of Scripture was authored through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but it used different human authors. So we see humanity come to life through the human authors, but we also see the perfection of Scripture because of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as He used the human authors. We see authors like Moses, and it was believed that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. That's called the Pentateuch. We see Genesis and Deuteronomy and Exodus and books like that in the first five books of the Bible. And those are narrative. We see Moses write many of those. 
But then we also see a different type of author. We see David writing some of the books, or specifically within Psalms. It was believed that David wrote approximately 73 of the Psalms that we find in the Old Testament. But you see, David wrote a little bit different than Moses because David, we see his humanity come to life. We see him wrestling with the things of God. We see him struggling to surrender. But then we see him surrender as he approaches the Lord and we see his thoughts revealed within scripture and the Psalms. So knowing the different authors also helps you understand more about the Old Testament. So now you know there's different things within the Old Testament, different genres and different authors. But you may still be thinking like, what does the Old Testament have to do with me? If the Old Testament was before Jesus, am I supposed to read the Old Testament and what do I do with it? So I wanna talk about a few different ways that you and I as believers are related to the Old Testament. And the first is this, that the Old Testament points to Christ. The Old Testament points to Christ. And that throughout the Old Testament, we see the history of Israel. We see Israel, the nation of Israel, unable to constantly save themselves. Israel needed a savior showing us that we too need a savior. But there's also specific people used in the Old Testament by God to point to Christ. We see people like David and the life he lived and the actions he took actually pointed to what Christ would do for us one day. So we see David in the story of David and Goliath coming forward to defeat a giant that Israel couldn't defeat on their own. Similar to how Jesus came forward to defeat the giant of death that we couldn't defeat on our own. So we see that Israel couldn't save themselves. We see people whose lives were used by God to point to what Christ would one day do. But then we also see specific people within the prophetic books speak of Christ to come. Even in the Psalms, we see these messianic Psalms that speak of Christ to come. So the first is that the Old Testament, it points to Christ. Although he wasn't walking here on the earth yet, it points to him and what he would do and who he would be. And the second is this is that the Old Testament still no longer serves as a means of justification. And here's what I mean by that, is now it's not through obeying the Old Testament laws, that's not how we gain an eternal life in heaven with the Father. Following the Old Testament no longer justifies us before God. Matthew 5, 17 says this, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. You see, Jesus saw himself as the fulfillment of the law. He came here to fulfill what we couldn't fulfill on our own. You see, we're no longer obligated to the laws of the Old Testament because Christ fulfilled them and all of them on our behalf. So maybe that strikes up some confusion because you're like, okay, if I'm not obligated, then why do we have it? Because am I supposed to obey it? Well, even though Christ has fulfilled the law, it doesn't mean that we still shouldn't act on the things in the law because there are still things that lead to this idea of practical godliness. It's that the Old Testament encourages practical godliness, and that's the final way that we are related to it. Within the Old Testament, we see, we see ways that we can live and act according to who God is, and we learn about his character, and how we can grow to be more like him while we are here. We see ideas like the Sabbath, and keeping a Sabbath no longer justifies us before the Lord, but it's still wise to rest in the Father, remind ourselves of who He is, and that He is always at work, even when we are not. So just because we're not obligated to the law, doesn't mean it's not wise to act on things that the law says within the Old Testament. So the Old Testament does a few things, among many, is that it points to Christ, yet it no longer serves as our means of justification because of Christ but yet it still encourages us in how to walk in practical godliness. Because you see, the Old Testament makes up nearly three-fourths of the Bible. So my challenge to you is that you wouldn't let fear or uncertainty or a lack of knowledge about the Old Testament keep you from reading it. Let's make a goal together to not neglect nearly 75% of the Bible because it is just as much God's word to us as the New Testament is. So continue to join us as we finish up these videos all about studying God's word because it was written to us and we're able to learn more about him and about ourselves and that includes the Old Testament.